What's up guys? Hey, I want to make a quick response video because I recorded a video the other day talking about a problem with the Line 6 stuff, the HX stomp effects loop causing some latency problems, some phasing issues when you introduce an external pedal. If you haven't seen that, go catch up, go watch that video. It's like the last one I just put out. Hey, real quick, I'm editing this video and I just want to clarify, I did not mean it to sound like HX stomp is the only one with this issue, this problem, like I said. I know this is a scientific truth. My thing is, is there something that Line 6 can do in the HX Stomp units to overcome this issue? That's all I'm trying to say. Let's get back to the video. Anyways, a lot of people have responded and I just want you guys to know, just like I said in the other video, I love Line 6 stuff. I'm a huge fan and I love the community, how they're always putting out updates. So let me just be clear about that. You gotta play the YouTube game to get people to watch your videos sometimes. And I wasn't making clickbait. It is an, an issue and it is a real issue. And I wanted to briefly talk about it, go over some of the comments that I saw in the YouTube comments and on Facebook and respond to those. A lot of you guys had some great feedback and I've had just a very little bit of time to try to uh, adjust and make some presets. So I wanna go through the three presets that I made to kind of uh, overcome this issue and I have a suggestion that I think is and could be doable for line six to do maybe fairly easily again I'm coming from this as just a, a, a guitar player a user of pedals I have no idea what it takes to make software and to have to deal with all the behind the scenes stuff I'm here to learn just like maybe some of you are so don't take any of what I say as uh, I'm angry or anything but I do think some people try to minimize this issue and I think that a lot of people have been uh, maybe put off by some of the struggles and I think maybe this is one of those things that people would use and I would use and I think of maybe bass players if you don't know we're talking about throwing in a, in a stereo effects loop on a parallel path and the latency that it causes what can we do the latency it causes uh, some phasing issues and it just makes your tone sound a little weird so what can we do to overcome it and uh, from my last video I wanted to try some things so let's get into it let me uh, let me show you what I've come up with and then offer maybe a suggestion let's go all right so we're here on my personal Facebook I just wanted to uh, there's been several threads and I did update. I said, hey, I can't get everyone's comments right now because there's been a lot and I've been really busy, I've been at a conference and I have some more things. I'm about to go out of town so I just, I wish I had more time to dive into this but I don't. But here's here's kind of what where we're at. Phasing issues. Eric Klein, I think works for Line 6. He, he responded and I want to respond to him. Very helpful. Thank you so much, Eric, for kind of trying to teach and catch us up on what we're doing. So here it says, even if Line 6 or to implement some sort of delay compensation for latency occurred by the DAD conversion through the effects loop and intelligently applying more if two loops are used depending on where they are in the signal path, the whole thing is pointless because there is no way the HX stomp can know the latency of any pedals you're connecting it to. So in my case, I ran out of the effects loop into the Jet Revelation version two stereo coming back in. That's what I am running. And so what I'm learning is that, you know, what if I were putting more pedals in the effects loop? Is there more latency? How in the world would the HX stomp be able to know what is happening in the outside world, outside of the effects loop to account for how much latency to make up? And that is completely completely understandable. Is it, I still don't know, is it per pedal? Does it matter the um, cables that you use? I don't really fully understand where the latency comes into play and how many connections add how much latency and I can see how that would be an issue for the HX Stomp to overcome this phase issue automatically. That is definitely true. Peter Ham says 3.2 will intelligently sense the amount of latency added by a string of pedals. Machine learning maybe? probably uh, being a little tongue in cheek there. And I suggested, I was wondering as some others, would having a parameter, uh, being able to have a, a slide bar like in HX edit in either the split block or the mixer block, uh, let us put um, the amount of latency, you know, adjust the latency on the other path so that uh, it corrects the phasing issue. Would that work? Maybe, I don't know. I think, I think that could solve the issue um, because uh, what some people are suggesting is, and I'll show you in a second, putting a simple delay block, putting out, put the mix to 100, put the feedback all the way back, and then put the time by milliseconds up until the phasing goes away. So we're scooting that phasing back in line with a simple delay block, and, and I've done that. Um, so could they, instead of using a block to do that, could they put that as a parameter 
down in the split or mixer block. Alex Price said that that seems to like, it could work, but he doesn't know if like milliseconds is a small enough unit and I don't know either. I'll show you some uh, stuff when we get there in just a second. And then uh, Kobe Burkhart, he said, that's not true at all. Cause if you like calculate detecting the transient and autocorrect, or like many others have said, add some kind of manual latency compensation knob in the parallel setting. So Eric Klein said this in response, it doesn't work that way. Latency isn't static and unchanging, nor is it always serial. And the transients from instruments are so rarely reliable or consistent. We need some sort of chirp generator, which kind of makes sense to compensate for things offline when you're not playing and a boatload of code and attempt to cover all the possible iterations and I can count 50 or more now. Anyways, we call this a newbie disaster magnet when the feature causes way more problems than it solves. I understand all that, so we don't wanna do that. We don't want some sort of automatic thing if it's gonna cause more problems and take away DSP and all that stuff. Besides, we already have manual latency compensation, which is what I just discussed. It's called the simple delay block, and I have that pulled up here, I'll show you. If you use time-based effects in your loops, which is by far the most common on parallel paths, make sure they're set to 100% wet mix, which I did not do in the previous video. I am gonna do that today and let you hear what it sounds like. Um, globally if possible. And then we control the mix with the effects loop block. So we will try that. Problem 100% solved and you have way more flexibility that way anyways. Full recall, assigning mix to snapshots, controlling it. And that is true, that's, that's awesome. You could also control it with another um, MIDI device like the MCX. If you're running serial type pedals, distortions, compression, or overdrives, which I haven't tried that yet, which I think would be common for like bass players. You know, bass players like to have their bass signal all the way through and apply in a parallel path uh, a distortion or something to it so they, they still have their original signal and you don't lose all the low end. So this might be very common for bass players. Uh, then yeah, every digital product will exhibit some problem, um, including tube amps and any digital pedal that's in a parallel effects loop. So I agree with everything he said, but what he didn't address was, could we add this little uh, slider block? You know, Can we adjust by the milliseconds or micro milliseconds or however you divide that and adjust per person's uh, issue, per problem, per setup? Uh, it seems like that, that could be done. Phil Miller said line six should definitely spend hundreds of man hours to address this issue that 0.05% of the people will come across. Uh, that's where I kind of had a problem with that statement because it's it's like minimizing, like this isn't a big issue, but it, it kind of is. Trying to go wet, dry, wet, or wet, dry, separating delays and reverbs is something a lot of people try to do. So line six came out with like the, the dynamic split block and that was kind of cool and I played with it. I made a video about it and it's, it's kind of cool, but I haven't found many real world uh, scenarios where I would want to use that. Maybe some of you have. This to me seems way more important. And so I think this is something Line 6 could, could work on, maybe. And I think, uh, you know, if it comes up enough, maybe, maybe it can. If it can't, then I would like, a, you know, I'm on board. If it can't, it can't. And let's just use these workarounds. But maybe it can. Some people are getting upset. Don't get upset. We're just trying to, we're just trying to help each other out here. Seems like Kobe here is responding to Eric. Definitely true but that's an issue with all ADDA gear and audio engineers have been able to work around these years. They have other things I wanna talk about, but I agree, adding something that would be as CPU intensive as that would clutter up the Helix environment too much, and I agree the manual compensation has worked fine for me, but it has been a pain in many people, with many people, because of it taking up a block, and I'm pretty sure we can both agree that adding a delay compensation to a parallel mixer settings would not be a huge endeavor for the lovely folks at Line 6. So that's what I wanted to, I agree with that statement. That's where, where I lie. So if that is not possible, maybe that takes up too much DSP, maybe it's something, a problem, it causes problems that we haven't even discovered, I'm willing to learn, uh, but that's my proposition. Give us something to where we can say, hey, I have a, a revelation. I have also put a Strymon timeline and a Mobius and whatever I wanna put in the effects loop and it has X amount of uh, latency I can determine that myself and fix it and then I can just use that on all my presets and the next person down the line might have a, a different, just allow us to a, adjust it. Might have a different setup, so just allow us to adjust it. Okay, let's hear some stuff. All right, so here's our first preset. I didn't rename all these, so it might get confusing, but I have like four presets right here. Uh, maybe we'll look at a couple of them. Anyways, this is the first one. This is just in series. This is what it sounds like. This is how I would, I would use uh, my rig on a normal day. So this next preset here, I put the, um, and we'll do this together, but I have a simple delay block up on the, the first path because if this one's causing some latency, then I wanna match that latency up on this top path. So I put this here and I came up with 
3.0 milliseconds. So you can start uh, with zero, and here I have my foot switch one here toggling on and off both the effects loop and the delay. So, so when I turn everything off, this is our unaffected tone, our goal tone. I turn on the effects loop without the revelation on. You can hear the phasing issue. So we'll come up here and we'll slide this. We'll turn this on. I'm at zero milliseconds and we can just count up. So there's point one. And you can just keep going up until it's just spread way too much. And there's actual delay. So I found that around three was the sweet spot. Turn it off. That's, that's pretty close. I feel like there is a stereo width here because we are delaying it and it's, it's if you notice here on uh, the delay path, <laughs> at the very beginning when we were at zero and we're counting up, you can go to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way to one, but once you get to one, it goes per millisecond. I can't type in 2.2 because it'll just round back down to 2.0. So we are stuck then to milliseconds. And and I feel like three is the closest. But what if like 3.1 or 2.9 were closer? So maybe we could get like something that was a little bit more uh, smaller increments so that we could adjust them. So with that, I think it pretty much fixes it. So then I can just turn on my delay and reverb and have a nice ambient sound without the, uh, if that's our dry tone, it's very close to our original dry tone, then. The other solution offered was to take your effects loop block and um, or the, the effect that is in there, like the revelation in my, in my example, and crank the mix up 100% and then adjust the mix with the effects loop block. So right now we would have super wet ambient reverb and I could put on my delays. So then I would need to adjust the mix with the parameter inside the effects loop and I think that sounds pretty good as well. Like Eric was saying, um, then you can set this parameter up to toggle up and down, have two different sounds on a foot switch. You could hook it up to snapshots. You could even set it to a, you know, an expression pedal and dial in exactly how much you want. But when you start creeping up, if you start wanting something very thick and ambient, as soon as this gets up to 100, you're gonna have that, that weird uh, tone like we discovered in the other video. I also wanted to see how that would affect other, um, per, like if you were to put more blocks after this. So, I've taken the mix, my reverb is all the way up uh, to see if like if it would mess up any other delays and I don't think it really does. So I think it is uh, a fix. Let's see, my mix is at 50 here. I've also put in like a chorus just to see. Um, I've also switched the order. So we'll play with the order and just hear how it sounds. So right now. Switch the order. Still sounds good. Let's turn on a chorus. So I think that's that's a good fix. I like it, it's fine. Uh, what I don't know is, I don't have time to test right now, uh, but I have a delay in here and I, I gotta go, so I, can't, I don't have time now. But if I were to put another 
pedal, like a delay in the effects loop, which it's on my board right now. I don't have time to rewire all that. Would setting my reverb to 100% mix and where it goes, like could I put a delay, an actual delay pedal before that and it still sound good? If I put it after 100% wet mix on the reverb, does that mess with the repeats of the delay? Um, just we have some more discovering to discover, but that's what we have so far. And I think that's doable. So just to recap, I think this solution right here works the best. I can keep um, my mix at 100 on here and just deal with my pedal. Uh, you know, three milliseconds seems to be good. In, in my case, I would like to try 3.1 or 2.9. So if we could get an update to where we could adjust milliseconds that, that tiny, that would be awesome. And then I know this is a delay, but could we add that would it be here? I think maybe in the, um, right here, the mixer block, just another panel that opens up another slide bar that allows you to delay that here as well. I think that would be awesome being able to, to drag that. If it's a parameter in here, we can also slide that and, and change it per, um, a snapshot or with a foot switch, whatever we wanted and allow people to adjust based on their use case and get rid of that latency problem. Can that happen? I think it, it might, it could. Uh, but like I said, I'm coming from this from a, I have no idea. So somebody let me know. I appreciate you guys uh, interacting. Uh, those of you who are like getting upset or using fighting words, you don't have to do that. It's fine. We're all friends. We're all just trying to get the best tone possible. And I think these conversations are really helpful. Um, thank you to everyone who commented and sorry, I can't get back to all of them. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to make more videos about this. I have some other helpful videos coming out very soon, things I'm very excited about. So make sure you subscribe, hang around the channel, and I'll see you soon. Bye.